हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे सेशन यू विल सी सम मोर क्लासेस दोज आर यूटिलिटी क्लासेस एंड दोज आर नॉट पार्ट ऑफ अवर कलेक्शन फ्रेमवर्क एज वी हैव डिस्कस इन द लास्ट सेशन सो वी विल स्टार्ट विथ सिंपल टाइम जोन क्लास सिंपल टाइम जोन क्लास इज अ कन्वीनियंट सब क्लास ऑफ टाइम जोन इट इम्प्लीमेंट्स टाइम जोन एब्स्ट्रैक्ट मेथड एंड अलाउ यू टू वर्क विथ टाइम जोन ऑफ ग्रेगोरियन कैलेंडर Okay, so it is a uh, sub class of time zone class first of all, and second, it is very convenient and it works with the time zones for the Gregorian calendar and also compute the daylight saving time. Simple time zone defines four constructor. First is simple time zone delta and time zone name, string time integer time delta and string time zone name. This constructor creates a sim simple time zone object. The object relative to Greenwich Mean Time is time delta. The time zone is named time zone name. Okay, so these all things you have to remember. Okay, so what syntax is simple time zone integer time delta the simple time zone name. It creates an object and object relative to GMT is called as time delta. Okay, so any object after that GMT is called as time delta and this time zone is named as TZ name. Second simple time zone constructor is time delta time zone ID DST month zero DST day in month zero DST day zero time zero DST month one DST day in month one in DST day one and this is the time one. Offset relative to GMT is called as time delta and time zone name is past is time zone ID. Okay. The start of daylight saving time is indicated by the parameters. DST month zero, DST day day in month zero, DST day zero and time zero. So these four things you have to remember. Start of daylight saving time because it computes the daylight saving time is indicated by DST month zero, DST day in month zero, DST day zero and time zero. The end of daylight saving time is indicated by DST month one, DST day in month one, DST day one. And time one. Okay, so start is indicated by zero, end is indicated by one. Okay, the third simple time zone constructor is simple time zone integer time delta string time zone id integer dst month zero integer dst day in month zero integer dst day zero integer time zero integer dst month one. Integer DST day in month one, DST day one, time one, and DST delta. Okay, DST delta is the number of milliseconds saved during daylight saving time. Okay, so DST delta is extra parameter added in the third simple time zone constructor, and its meaning is the number of milliseconds saved during daylight saving time. Okay, or all else are Similar to the second constructor. The fourth simple time zone constructor is integer time delta time zone ID DST month zero DST day in month zero DST day zero DST time zero. Integer time zero more integer DST month one integer DST day in month one integer DST day one time one time one more and DST delta. Okay, so two things are added time zero more in integer format. Time one mode in integer format. Okay, time zero mode specifies the mode of the starting time, and time one mode specifies the mode of the ending time. Okay, valid modes are standard time, call time, and UTC time. Okay, so this mode will be specified here and here. Okay, so these things you have to remember. So there are four constructor of simple time zone. The time mode indicates how the time values are interpreted. The default mode used by the other constructors is wall time. Okay. When time zone mode is not given, the default constructor given is wall time. Local is the second class. Next class. Local class is instantiated to produce object that describe a geographical or cultural region. Okay. In which region? Or in which locality you are residing in, okay? So that will be given or identified by local, 
and this will create a object and that will tell your geographical or cultural region. It is one of the several classes that provide you with the ability to write programs that can execute in different international environments. For example, the formats used to display date, times and numbers are different in various regions. So, locale is intentionally created to uh, make it possible to write programs that can execute in different envir international environment, in different countries and different states and different cities and so on. The formats used to display date, time, numbers are different in various regions. Internationalization is a large topic that is beyond the scope of this book. But very important topic, basic topic is Java is worldwide use language. Okay. And its applet is also worldwide use. Oh, so whenever you are thinking about the worldwide, so local is helping you to work your uh, programs in different international environments. Okay. Many programs will only need to deal with its basic things include setting the current local. Okay. So in which inter uh, in which area you are residing in or you, which for which local you have to set your program. That can be done basically using the local object. The local class defines the following constants that are useful for dealing with the most common locates. Canada, Canada, French, China, Chinese, English, France, French. German, Germany, Italian, Italy, Japan, Japanese, Korea, Korean, PRC, Simplified Chinese, Taiwan, Traditional Chinese, UK and US. Okay. So, most common locates are given in the table. You can write those down or you can take a printout. Okay. So, you have to remember this all locates. Expression local dot Canada represents the local object for Canada. Okay. Local string language. These three constructors are present for local. Local string language, string country, local string language, string country, string data. These constructors build a local object to represent a specific language and in the case for the last two countries. Okay. So, local object will be created for the first constructor for particular language and second is for language and particular countries and second, third is for language, particular country and particular data. <coughs> These values must contain ISO, ISO standard language and country codes. Okay. So, any language you cannot specify over here. A a any language that you will specify in the bracket as a parameter that must be ISO standard language and ISO standard country codes. Auxiliary browser and vendor specific information can be provided in data. Locus defines several methods. Okay, so there are various methods. First, of, first and one of the most important is the default. So that will set the default local and that is very important and very much usable method. Static void set default local local object. This is the default local to that specified by local object. Some other interesting methods are final string gate display country, final string gate display language, final string gate display name. This return human readable strings that can be used to display the name of the country, name of the language and complete description of the local. Okay. Default local can be obtained using get default. Like a set default, there is get default also available. It is shown here static local get default. So it will give you your default local set for your particular PC. Okay. Calendar and Gregorian calendar are examples of classes that operate in a local sensitive manner. And date format, simple date format also dependent on local. Next is random. The random class. The random class is a generator of pseudo random numbers. These are called pseudo random numbers because they are simply uniformly distributed sequences. Okay. Pseudo random means randomly generated. And this uh, random class is very much useful when you are creating a game using Java programming language. Okay. So, games can be having random numbers 
like a random way of operation okay like this so in that case random is very much useful for creating games random defines following constructors random random long seed the first version creates a number of gen number generator that uses the current time as the starting or seed value okay and second is second allows you to specify a seed value manually okay next boolean methods defined by random boolean next boolean returns the next boolean random number void next bytes byte values first fields values with randomly generated values values array will be filled with the randomly generated values double next double returns the next double random number float next float returns the next float random number double next gaussian returns the next gaussian random number integer next int returns the next integer random number integer next int integer n returns the next integer random number within the range 0 to n long next long returns the next long random number void set seed long new set set seed value that is the starting point for the random number generator to that specified by new seed okay if you initialize a random object with the seed you define the starting point for the random sequence <laughs> if you use the same seed to initialize another random object you will expect the same random sequence okay what is seed seed is the starting point for the random sequence and if you use the same seed to initialize another random object you will expect the same random sequence if you want to generate space different sequences give the different seed value the easiest way is use the current time to seed a random object so that every time new random sequence will be generated this approach reduces the possibility of getting repeated sequences because you are getting the current time and current time is getting updated each and every second public methods defined by random we will see in the table there are seven types of types of random numbers that you can extract from a random object random boolean values are available for from next boolean random bytes can be obtained by calling next byte okay random boolean values are available from next boolean and random bytes you can get by next byte integers by using next int long integers uniformly distributed over their range can be obtained with long next next long the next float and next double methods return a uniformly distributed float and double respectively between 0 and 1, 0, 0.0 and 1.0. Finally, next Gaussian returns a double value centered at 0, 0.0 with a standard deviation of 1.0. Okay, This is what is known as bell curve. So what is next Gaussian? It will return a double value centered at 0, 0.0 with a standard deviation of 1.0. Here is an example that demonstrates the sequence produced by next Gaussian. It obtains 100 random Gaussian values and averages these values. And also count number of values that will fall within two standard deviations plus or minus using increments of 0.5 or each category for each category. Okay. So what we will see now, you will see an example that demonstrates the sequence produced by next Gaussian it will obtain 100 random Gaussian values and it will make uh, average, create average from these values and it also count the number of values that fall within the two standard deviations plus or minus 0 0.5 for each category. Okay, and the result is displayed sideways on the screen. Random R is equal to new random value and sum is created. And integer bell array is created of size 10. Value is equal to r dot next Gaussian. 100 random uh, numbers are created. Sum is equal to sum plus value. Double t is equal to minus 2. Okay. So what is t over here? It is in, in, initialized with minus 2 every time. And sum will be updated with the new random value every time. Okay. For 0 to 10 incremented by 1 and t is incremented by plus 
zero point five every time if value whatever value is generated is less than this t. What is t over here? Minus two. Minus two plus zero point five is minus two point five. If this value that is generated over here, next Gaussian value, if it is lesser than minus two point five for the first time, bell of x, bell of this x that is zero, it will be incremented by one and break. Average of values are created like whatever sum is divided by hundred. And bell curve sideways for integer zero to ten. For integer x is equal to bell of i, x of a greater than zero, x minus minus. So it is decrementing by one. This uh, outer for loop is incrementing by one. And star is printed and new line is printed. Okay. So sample program run is displayed over here. The leg distribution is like. Uh, average of values is displayed and bell is created. Okay, so this is the bell generated using star operation. Okay, so what we have done over here, first of all, we created a random object. Random r is equal to new random. Value and sum is generated. Bell array of size ten is created. Then for zero to hundred times, next Gaussian number is created, and its sum is also done every time. T is initialized with minus two every time that e, T will be initialized uh, added with point zero five. If this value is lesser than T, bell of x will be incremented by one. Okay, so bell of zero will be one. Bell of one will be. Uh, bell of one will be. Two and so on. Every time it will be incremented by one, and the loop is break. But when when the value is greater than t, okay, and display the bell curve sideways. Only one side bell for using star is displayed over here. Using two loops, outer loop is incremented by one, zero to ten. Inner loop is uh, decremented by one from bell of i. X is greater than zero. X minus minus star and new line is printed, and sample program run is displayed over here. Okay, so this way bell-like output is generated. Next is observable. Observable class is used to create subclasses that other parts of your program can observe. Okay, so observe whoever class that extends observable. <clears throat> that class can be observed by another classes of your project or program when an object of such subclass undergoes a change observing classes are notified okay any changes in important changes are done observing classes are notified for them observing classes must implement the observer interface every time Whoever is observing your class must implement the observer observer interface if it, if it want to observe your class, which defines the update method. The update method is called when an observer is notified of a change in an observed object. Okay, so what thing you have to remember is if any class you want to be observed by any other classes. Okay. Or if your class, whenever any changes in your class should be notified to all other classes, your that class should be extending observable class first thing, and whoever another classes, whichever another classes are observing your class, those must implement the observable interface. Okay, and the uh, that observable interface contains the update method. And that update method is called when observer is notified of a change in observed object. Okay. Observable defines the methods shown in table. Object that is being observed must follow two simple rules. Okay. Object means whichever class that is being observed must follow the rule. First is if it is changed, it must follow the state change method. And when it is ready to notify observer, that is another classes of this change, 
it must call notify observers so two method it must call first is set change and second is notify observer and this causes the update method to be updated in the observing object to be called automatically okay if the object calls notify observer without having previously called set change no action will take place so set change is must and notify observer is also must if you are calling notify observer only without calling the set change okay so whatever change that you are doing you are not changing them actually and directly are notifying observer nothing will take place so whatever whatever you have to do you have to take care of this be careful of this first of all whatever change in your class that is being observed is done that change is uh, done in set change method and after that after change is updated it will call the notify observer method the observed object must call both set change and notify observer before update will be called notice notice that notify observer has two forms one that takes an argument and one that does not take that argument if you call notify argument notify observer with an argument this object is passed to observer update method as its second parameter if you are passing an argument update second parameter will be your this parameter otherwise the list pass to update you can use the second parameter for passing any type of object that is appropriate for your application okay you can use the second parameter for passing any type of object that is appropriate for your application that is your choice any type of object you can pass okay so now we will see the methods defined by observable void add observer observer object adds object to the list of object observing the invoking object okay add observer one more observer is added to this class adds the object to the list of object observing the invoking object protected void clear change calling this method returns the status of the invoking object to unchanged integer count observers returns the number of objects observing the invoking object void delete observer observer object this one object is deleted if it is observing your object removes object from the list of objects observing the invoking object void delete observers delete all the observers from the invoking object boolean has changed returns to if the invoking object has been changed and false if it is not void notify observers notifies all the observers of the invoking object that it has changed by calling update a null is passed as the second argument to update and void notify observers with parameter object object notifies all the observers of the invoking object that it has changed by calling update object is passed as an argument to update okay in first case notify observer has no parameter in this case update is passed with a null value and then in the second case there is a parameter called object object and this object itself is passed as a parameter as an argument to the update method protected void set change called when the invoking object has changed okay next is observer interface observe uh, to observe an observable object you must implement the observer interface this interface defines only one method void update observable observe object and object argument here observable object is the object being observed an argument is a value passed by notify observers okay if it is not it will be passed as null if it is there it will be passed as a second argument the update method is called when a change is observed in the observed object change takes place okay whenever change is there update is called automatically otherwise it is not called observer example now we will see the example it creates the observer class called watcher that implements the observer interface the class being monitored is called being watched and it expands the observable class 
instead being watched is the method called counter which simply counts down from a specified value it uses flip method to wait a tenth of a second between counts each time the count changes notify observers is called with the current count passed as its argument and this causes the update method inside watcher to be called automatically which displays the current count inside main of watcher and being watch object called observing and observing we are created then observing uh, added to the list of observers to be observed this means that observing dot object will call each time a counter calls notify observers okay in one class countdown has begin in the second class whichever the updated count is it is displayed from taking update okay demonstrate the uh, observable class okay a class watcher implements observer public void update observable object object argument update called count is current count integer argument integer value this is the class being observed being watched extends observable void counter integer period for first is not given whatever uh, when you are calling from the public static void main whatever value we are we passing from that counter will be it radical is greater than is equal to 0 if the counter you are passing it is 10 it will iterate from 10 to 0 if the counter you are passing you are 15 it will be uh, displayed from 15 to 0 and so on then called set change method and in between 10th of a second we said that is 1 100 millisecond notify observer is called new integer with the period okay period is the current count and in between it is keeping 400 millisecond being watch observe new being watch of watcher observing new watcher observe dot add observer observing add the observing to the list of observers so to connect the observing and observe what we have done you have we have added this line observe dot add observer observing and counter start from 10 the output is update called count is 10 update called count is 9 update called count is 8 Likewise, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Okay, so this way we have understood the observer class also. In the next session, we will see more classes related to our utility classes. Those are very interested, interesting. So you should practice whatever we are uh, learning in the sessions. You should practice at home and. learn and enjoy the utility classes as well so meet you in the next session with a new topic till then you can practice okay so thank you so much